everybody, I am the Happy Candy, and today I'm going to be talking about balloon distractions. Now, I've actually uploaded a couple of other balloon distraction videos in the past. If you want to see the previous encounters that I've had with balloon distractions, I do encourage you to press that little blue annotation that's right on your screen. It'll take you to the playlist where you can see the balloon distraction videos in order. But nevertheless, uh, for those of you that want to know this, the, the backstory of it, is basically I put out a video, um, you know, referring to some forums that I read online from people that I know and trust in the balloon industry that said, stay away from balloon distractions. In fact, that's the name of the video, stay away from balloon distractions. Anyway, Ben Alexander, the CEO, owner of Balloon Distractions, then called me and threatened to sue me for that video, which of course I recorded put on YouTube, and of course many, many lulls were had. But nevertheless, Ben Alexander of Balloon Distractions called me last month. And this time he didn't want to sue me, he actually wanted to hire me. And I was wondering if we could hire you to do your, I mean, he, he, criticizing my company doesn't make you any money. It might get you a couple additional hits, but I mean, Criticizing balloon distraction certainly, I'm sure, doesn't make you a living. But you're apparently very good at specifically linking video and getting attention and putting something together. And I was wondering if you ever considered uh, doing that as a consultant, because you're good at it. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Um, you basically want me to show you how to develop a larger reputation online? Well, I'd be interested. I'd be interested in, in hearing how, you know, hearing what you have to say and possibly hiring you as an internet consultant. And I got to admit, for a brief time, the money was tempting. The money that he was promising was tempting. Uh, if you want to see the entire phone call, it's uh, posted now online. It's unlisted. Link to it is going to be down in the video description. Or, of course, you can also press the yellow annotation. It'll take you to there at any given point in time. But nevertheless, I want to talk about uh, balloon distractions and some of the problems that uh, people in the balloon industry have with the balloon distractions company. And I want to lay out a couple of points. Number one, why, in my opinion, people should not work for balloon distractions. In other words, why a, a balloon artist, uh, such as myself or perhaps one of you, should not work for this company. And second of all, in my opinion, if you are a restaurant or another type of a business, that has a need for balloon entertainment, why balloon distractions may not be the best way to go. Because when you consider the person that you're actually doing business with, and Ben Alexander, and the more that you learn about him, you're gonna, you're gonna really question, is this really a person that I wanna get in business with? But of course, this here is all my opinions. Okay, now the first thing that I want to do is I want to grab their Squido page, which of course will be linked down in the video description for those that want to read it. I printed out a couple of pages right over here. And one of the first things that should come to your mind is the opinion that Ben Alexander has of balloon entertainers. And I want to read the quote right here. In the balloon community, the majority of those claiming to be balloon artists, well, they aren't. Most people out there know four basic shapes that call themselves artists, and we just don't believe that. We do know that there are those in this industry that are truly masters and gurus and teach balloons, but our goal in this industry is simple. Provide quality balloons quickly to guests waiting for their food. And then, of course, I'll add in restaurants, because they primarily do balloons in restaurants. Let me quote again. It, the majority, they're saying the majority of the balloon twisters out there are not good professionals. That they only know four basic shapes. Okay. Well, I'm going to get to something that I think 
you guys might be interested in. This is the Balloon Distractions New Balloon Artist Manual. When you become a new twister for Balloon Distractions, this is your training manual. It lists off the items that you will need to learn and master before you are sent to work at a restaurant. A Tommy gun or a ray gun, a monkey, a toucan, tiger or cat, two doves and a heart, a flower, motorcycle, helicopter, horse, balloon turtle, rattlesnake with salt in the tail, flower bracelet, three balloon penguin, alien balloon and fish on a fishing pole. Okay, so they teach you 15 balloons instead of four. These people are truly balloon masters. And you want to know how? Well, it's real simple. We recruit clean-cut and outgoing high school and college age kids. Teach them balloons in about 10 days. Train them for two hours in a restaurant and then get going. Two hours. Are you serious? One of the telling signs that you're working for a shady business is when they're constantly pushing how much money you're going to be making, how much money you're going to be making, how much money you're going to be making. Let's go ahead and just uh, pay attention to this. We want you to be successful, be promoted to a thousand dollars a week or more if you wish. There we go. That's the first thing they tell you on page two. And then, of course, it continues on. Advancement with balloon distractions. Trainers, we are always looking for sharp people who want to step up and become trainers. As a trainer, you can earn up to $100 to $300 a week by building a team. Sales. See how big and big these words are right here? Bada boom, bada bing. Regional partners. As a regional partner, you can make anywhere from $30,000 to $50,000 to over $100,000 a year working with balloon distractions as a regional partner. So they're, they're constant, and, and this is just in the first five pages. This is a 19-page uh, manual. I've only printed out the first five pages because, you know, printing is expensive. But, I mean, they're, in the first five pages, it's just money, 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 money. Now, the trainer's manual... This here is the trainer's manual that they have. You know, this is what they do, you know, when they're meeting with you over a course of about 10 days and then, of course, two hours at the restaurant. It tells them basically right here at the very beginning. It's like, look at how much money we made money right off of the, right off of the top right here. And then, of course, it tells them to get the starter kit. First thing they want to do is they want to make sure they buy the starter kit. Now, for those of you that want to know what the starter kit is, it's $48 plus shipping. It includes an apron, a tip button, 500 balloons, the two-disc DVD, and a hand pump you'll use to inflate the balloons. So, yeah, two balloon DVDs and, and of course, 500 balloons, $48. Yeah, it's pretty reasonable, but, but nevertheless, it's like if they don't order the starter kit, they will never work out. Sell, sell, sell. Well, now let's go ahead and talk about how Balloon Distractions makes its money. Typically, they start out with $45 for basically a four-hour shift of doing balloons at a restaurant. So, let's take this $45 right here. Okay, now, the first thing that it goes, it goes to Balloon Distractions. That's where the money goes. It does not go to the Twister, uh, the, the restaurant, whatever place you're doing the balloons at, that is billed, and the money goes to the company. The company then, you know, sends some money to the person who sold the, uh, the business. In other words, the salesman that went in and convinced uh, the restaurant manager to hire balloon distractions. He gets a cut of that $45. Another person who gets a cut is the trainer who actually trained the balloon twister that's doing the work. He gets a cut. And then, of course, you've also got another person, your regional director. He gets a cut. Okay, so what we have right here 
is we got all this down over here, and then of course this is where all the balloon distractions, the people that are actually doing the work, but they do not see any of this $45. They do not receive any of the money that is paid to balloon distractions, unless of course they're lucky enough to be a salesman for balloon distractions, unless of course they are qualified to be a trainer, in which they're training others, or if they are a regional director making anywhere from thirty to fifty to one hundred thousand dollars a year. But if you're the actual person who's doing the work, you are not paid. Now, according to the manual they have you out here, basically it says that you can make anywhere from, uh, let's see, you can make, oh yeah, you can make a thousand dollars a week if you want, if you want, right here. That's how much they're saying that you can make. How do you make it? You make it off of working for tips. 100% working for tips. Some people do not tip. And furthermore, if you go onto their website, uh, basically it says it's like sometimes you don't get a tip. You know, if people don't want to tip you or if they're uh, paying with a credit card, you're just not going to get it. But you work for tips. But you can make, you know, $15 an hour. They post all the, all the time on Craigslist. It's like you can make $15 an hour. They have no way of being able to guarantee that $15 an hour. But yet, this is what they're promising on their ads on Craigslist. Now, this shape reminds me of something. What does this shape remind me of? Oh, wait a minute. I know what this shape reminds me of, but <laughs> I better erase that because unfortunately, that shape is a bad, bad word. And if I happen to mention that shape, oh, I might get in trouble. So I have erased the shape, you know, the geometric shape. I cannot mention that geometric shape. But nevertheless, that's what that looks like when you have people up on top earning money. And then, of course, th and this is what, what they do. And when you, when you go in here to the regional director's manual and all this stuff right over here, Basically, what is to, and this of course here is our compensation timetable. Basically, in order to receive your monthly bonuses, what you have to do is you have to, number one, work a certain number of gigs yourself. You also have to train new employees. You also have to, uh, if, for example, if you're in sales, you also have to make sure that you sell more new restaurants. Now, here's the problem. And this goes back to the uh, geometric shape that, unfortunately, I cannot, man I cannot name. But there comes a point in time in which you saturate the market. There's no more places where you can go in and uh, sell new restaurants. There is not a place where you can recruit more people because, I mean, the people who are on the bottom, once you eventually saturate the market, or if, okay, you add five people, and then those five people will then add five more people who will then come in under me, and then those five people will go under those five people, and then, of course, they'll all come under me, and then, of course, I'm making money off of this person, off of this person, off of this person, off of this person. I'm here making all this money, and I'm just sitting here pretty much doing nothing. That mm, sounds like a geometric shape to me. It's about the personality. I've seen young people. I've seen old people. It's it's really not even about the skill of the balloons. I've seen one person. All they was able to do was dogs and sword, but yet there are a much better. She was a much better balloon entertainer than I was. I was impressed uh, when I saw her in action. I met her in. Uh, uh, this was in uh, Nevada. I met her in, and um, yeah, she was fantastic. 
she did uh, each of them with a uh, with a smile and song. So it's about the personality. It's it's not even about the the talent you have as a balloon. It's about your talent that you have as an entertainer and the connection that you can make with your audience, whether it's just one person or a crowd of hundreds. Man Alexander of Balloon Distractions also has a couple of other interesting theories about his uh, so-called competition. This is one of the interesting things that he had to say about other balloon twisters. Uh -huh. There's a lot of people with, who twist balloons out there who are listed sex offenders, uh -huh. who have been arrested for theft, drug, uh, drug use, and everything else, and these people apply to get on our team all the time. We turn these people down. Now, sometimes, I had a guy who applied on our team, he had raped a child. Mm -hmm. And we turned him down, and he got very angry, and he went on all the forums, he started blasting my company. <laughs> well, naturally, of course, anybody who criticizes Ben Alexander Balloon Distractions is, of course, a child molester. I'll just leave that up to you. But uh, here's the thing. Um, this is not a selling point, and especially if you're a person who is, uh, uh, who is a company wanting to do business with Balloon Distractions. Balloon Distractions is not the only game in town that makes sure that its uh, people are, are thoroughly checked out. Because anybody can go down and get an FBI fingerprint clearance card. You know, I went down and I got a fingerprint clearance card. You know, basically just go down to the police station and say, I want a fingerprint clearance card. They run a background check on you and bada boom, bada bing. Uh, you're qualified to go in all sorts of stuff and they, you have it done every year. It's perfectly fine. So basically just ask the person who's doing balloon twisting for you, do you have a fingerprint clearance card? And if they don't, just say, okay, well, can you go get one? It's real simple. And furthermore, if you are a balloon professional, I would encourage you to have a fingerprint clearance card and carry it in your pocket. And it's one of the selling points. It's like, see, I've already had myself checked in background. I am safe, certified to work around children. Furthermore, it's always a good idea to make sure that you know CPR. So have your CPR card. I've got a CPR certification. Anybody can have this thing done. So it's not, it's not balloon distractions that's the only game in town that makes sure that its employees are checked. I know many people who actually own their own balloon companies who, by the way, actually compensate their employees very well, and they happen to do a very good job of screening their applicants. Now this is what balloon distractions had to say regarding the value of balloon twisting. I, I have a question for you. A lot of people criticize balloon distractions because they feel that we're not charging enough when we go into the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Do you think in a slower recess, in, in a recessionary economy, which we're clearly in, uh, do you think it does get harder to charge the restaurants like 100 and 150 a night in this economy? Um, I know people who who can do it. Um... I myself usually charged, uh, back when I was doing it, um, I would charge about $75 an hour. Um, one time, uh, this was uh, for a city function, I did it for uh, $53 an hour, but then again, they booked me for 15 hours. Um, wow. So, yeah, but of course, one day of that was actually in the rain. That was a lot of fun. But... Um, it, it, it is a, a, about if you can if you can get somebody to pay you $150 an hour, then yeah, $150 an hour. I, I know um, this one person who who I mean he he owns his own house, has a couple of other people working for him, um, you know, just earning lots and lots of money. Of course, he's a lot better than than I am as far as doing balloons. Because uh, I, I haven't done balloons uh, professionally in a couple of years, but um, yeah, he makes good money doing it. Now, see, if you're a balloon twister, he doesn't even respect you enough to number one believe that you should even be paid for what you're doing. But he doesn't even believe that the art of balloon twisting is worth more than basically just. 10 or $11 an hour, which $45 for four hours, that's what it is. That's what he thinks that your talent is worth. It's basically just worth $10, $11 an hour. You know, uh, now me, you know, 
One thing that, that I failed in the balloon business is making a lot of money doing it. It's like I may be, you know, like the king of YouTube when it comes to balloons, but when it came to running my own balloon business, that's not something I was able to do very well. But here's the problem. I do know that other people have made a great success at doing balloons for a living, and they charge a lot of money for it. I know one person, he charges $300 an hour, and he gets $300 an hour, and he has to turn customers down because he it's, it's just him. He doesn't, you know, uh, have clones of himself that he can, you know, he, he has other people working for him, and that's fine that they can do that, but there's a demand for him, and he can't meet all of those demands. It's, it's not just that anybody can just go out there and twist balloons. It's the entertainment. It's whether or not you can work a crowd. Now, those who have been subscribed to me for a while know that I live in a studio apartment. I live uh, by very modest means. I am going to be going back into truck driving in December, but right now money is kind of tight. And for a time, the money was tempting. It was very, very tempting. However, it would be unethical for me to accept money from this company that I believe is not only hurting the balloon industry, the people who work in the balloon industry, but also the people who contract with the balloon industry. In other words, the people getting the balloons. I believe they are being hurt because, as it says right here, look at the minimal training that these people are getting. They're not getting qualified balloon twisters in here. They're basically getting people who just get a couple of hours worth of training, learn how to do 15 shapes, get tossed into a restaurant, and it's like, okay, you're on your own. Now, here is the agreement. This is what's called the Balloon Distractions Consultant Agreement right here. Now, this is very important that I want to point out is this section right here, which basically says the consultant acknowledges that the corporation invests substantial time, expense, and effort in obtaining and maintaining its relationships with its customers, representatives, independent contractors, crew managers, and regional managers. Well, while it may be true that you have maintained significant cost as far as recruiting your customers, as far as the time and cost of training your independent contractors, you know, the, the people who are down here at the bottom, I don't see it. Why? Because I've got your, uh, your training manual. The people pay for their own training. They purchase the supplies. Okay, They're, they are not compensated. And furthermore, I'm looking here at your trainer's manual. Your trainer's manual, only, your trainers only get paid when they're twisting the balloons. They're not getting paid for training people. They're only being paid when those people actually work. So you're not paying anything for their training. And furthermore, when you consider how many DVDs there are by other people, YouTube videos, you cannot, in any sense, make the claim that <clears throat> all their knowledge of balloons came from you. So, for you to say this, the consultant agrees not to call on, solicit, or otherwise contract any customers of the corporation. Furthermore, the consultant agrees not to solicit any representatives Crew managers, blah blah blah. Basically, it's saying it's like once you work for us, you can't you can't go out on your own. You can't have your own things on the side. The, see, the, the thing is, when I was uh, doing restaurants, people would want to hire me for birthday parties. Okay, right here is basically essentially saying it's like if somebody wants to hire you for a balloon party, you can't do it. Why? Because balloon distractions is in the business of doing balloon parties. And guess what? At the same thing they're doing with the restaurants, they're doing with the balloon parties, the birthday parties. They're charging very, very little. It's like, now, I mean, obviously there's, you know, always going to be somebody who's going to charge less than others. It's like Walmart. You know, Walmart, the low price leader, you know, a lot of uh, other grocery stores had problems competing with them, and some of them went out of business. There's always going to be a Walmart around, and eventually somebody will take out Walmart one day. So it's not... You know, that everybody's angry with you, that it's like, oh, you're just charging so little. Here's the big problem that people have with your company. One, the company gets the money, your salesman gets the money, your trainers gets the money, the regional directors gets the money, but the people actually doing the work, they're not getting the money. 
They are not being compensated for their time. They are purchasing their own supplies, their own balloons, all that stuff, but yet they are not being compensated for it. Now, furthermore, it says right here, the consultant understands that as an independent contractor, he or she has no claims against the corporation for wages, unemployment insurance, workers' compensation, or disability benefits. What if one of these people gets injured on the job? They don't have any disability benefits. They don't have workers' compensation. Are you really running a legitimate company when you're basically telling people if you get injured on the job, it's your own tough luck? Very, very shady in my opinion. But nevertheless, getting back to it, what did Ben Alexander of Balloon Distractions want to hire me to do? Like I said, you can check out the entire call down below, but essentially what he wanted me to do was basically to help uh, his videos get more exposure, and he was going to pay me $50 for every thousand views. Okay. Uh, I was talking to my lead IT guy, and because you're so good at the uh, you know networking the videos, what I'd really like to have is an educational channel so that, I mean, our people could, my people could go there and learn balloons, but also anyone to log on and learn balloons. And is it possible to link up to link up all the videos that my people have made on the internet and kind of incorporate them into one channel and call it like the balloon distractions instructional channel or something like that? You can, but that would require several people to have the password. Uh, and the one problem with that is any one of them at any time could change the password and lock people out. The better way to do it would be to have people uh, email the, uh, the videos to one person who would then be in charge of uploading the videos. Okay, here's, here's my idea. Um, I want to have, have, have something positive on the inter Internet about us that my people can use to learn more shapes and also make more money. Because you and I both know if you make better shapes, you make better money, right? Um, and a lot of these kids are just working them their way through college. So anything I can do to help them out would be a good thing. What if we, what if we made you our YouTube training instructor, and I would have my piece, and you would start the channel, and and you can link it to whatever, because it's gonna it should help your your kids too. But uh, we have our people email their videos here where they're doing a balloon or talking about the company or whatever, and for every video that goes up on the channel that hits a certain amount of hits, I pay a bonus to you for your work. In other words, like, if we get a video that goes to a thousand hits, I pay you fifty dollars. So if you put up, if we put up like a hundred videos and they all go to a thousand hits, that, that would compensate you for your time and your effort and your expertise. What do you, th what do you think about that? Okay, uh, that sounds fair. Now me, I am fully capable of turning that into at least $500 a month worth of income. But <clears throat> it is, and believe me, I could definitely use that extra money. I certainly could use that extra money. I need that extra money. But it's unethical, it is morally wrong to take that money from someone, from a business that I believe is not only hurting the balloon industry, but is also hurting the balloon customers. And that is the reason why I have to say no. And I was tempted. I mean, it's like I'm, I'm weak, I'm human like everybody else. But I sent him off an email and I said, it's like, I'm not interested. Do not call me anymore. If you call me again, I'm recording it and it's going up on YouTube. But anyway, this call here took place like within the first uh, couple of days, I think it was on uh, the first week of last month. But anyway, uh, I finally posted it on the internet, so you guys can go ahead and see it. I kept it off, and let me tell you the reason why I'm posting this call. Josh Sizemore recently uh, posted a video. He is a, a former employee of yours, and basically he posted a video saying, you know what, I worked for this company for years, this is my experience with balloon distractions. 
you sent him an email threatening to sue him. Okay? You cannot handle it when people criticize your company. If people criticize your company, you, know, you sue them. And here's the other thing. <clears throat> you'll, you'll notice that last month, a couple of videos went up by people, a lot of them, with the exception of, of one, that have never posted a video. But they come on camera and they post a video and they're all saying the same thing, almost as if they're reading from a script. Here's what I discovered. Balloon Distractions was actually offering uh, $250 for the best video about Balloon Distractions. In other words, you had to offer money to get people to say nice things about your company. Now, your company has hundreds of people who work for you, hundreds of people who work for you, yet at the promise of actually getting paid, and remember, these people are not being paid, but at the promise of being paid, only seven people were willing to come forward and say something nice about your company. When you're having to pay people to say nice things about your company, and only seven people do it, what does that tell you about your company? Think about it. I'm the Happy Cabbie, and you guys have a good day. I'm fucking wedded! There's also stuff out there that's, that's blatantly false. I mean, there's someone out there that says we don't have any insurance coverage, and we cover our people a million dollars in liability per gig anywhere in North America. So there's like a lot of a lot of misrepresentation out there. There's a lot of stuff on the internet that's from like four or five years ago that isn't even act that has, it doesn't reflect where my business is today in 2011. I mean, we have been in business eight years, so it's like one of those things where you could say stuff about us that was true in 04. Uh, like we didn't have liability insurance in 04, but we certainly had it, you know, since then. There's things that you could say about my company that were true at one point but we've actually improved and changed since then. So there's also stuff out there that's, that's blatantly false. I mean, there's someone out there that says we don't have any insurance coverage, and we cover our people a million dollars in liability per gig anywhere in North America. So there's like a lot of, a lot of misrepresentation out there. Well, it's real simple. If anybody uh, doubts that you have insurance, for example, say, for example, somebody says that you don't have insurance, which is a claim that I've heard before, it's real simple. Uh, put on your website the name of the insurance company that, uh, that you deal with. I can do you one better. I can actually post the entire policy. I mean, just to let you know, I spend, uh, last year we booked 17000 gigs. Okay, and I spent about fifty, about fifty-two hundred dollars just on liability insurance. 